to welcome Guido Tosolin, Senior Manager Chassis Development at AppPlus Idiata, and Veronica Santos, Research Engineer at Tenneco. Together with a team of engineers from Mahindra and Mahindra, Idiata and Tenneco have developed a new method for tuning shock absorbers using Idiata's DIM250 driving simulator, reducing tuning time and costs. The team achieved optimal ride balance for a new BEV platform, demonstrating the potential of simulation technology in the automotive industry. Last year, we showed you how the driving simulator has been a key tool to develop the flagship SUV from Mahindra, the XUV700. This year, we would like to move one step ahead and show you how we have moved in the direction of further and further integration of new systems. And specifically, we will explain how we have integrated uh, uh, semi-active damper technologies in the driving simulator in order to support the development of a new uh, vehicles platform, which will be battery electric vehicles from Mahindra. So today I'm uh, happy to share the stage here with uh, Dr. Vikraman from Mahindra, who will provide you a short introduction about the new platform, the Inglo platform, which has been the center of this project. After, uh, I will give the word to Veronica from Teneco. She will introduce you to the uh, damper models of Teneco and how they have been introduced in the driving simulator of Idiada. And finally, I will provide you some insights about how the process of developing these dumpers and selecting the correct hardware has been uh, done in our driving simulator in, uh, in Idiada. So over to you, Vikraman. Hi, hi, Guido, and hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Yeah, so, uh, Guido, I share the screen? Uh, no, no, no problem. It's visible already. I will do the slide change. So, uh, first of all, uh, I'm extremely happy and pleased to uh, present this work that uh, we have been doing uh, along with Idiada, who is our trusted partner for uh, vehicle dynamics development uh, for so many years now, and also with uh, Teneco, who are our uh, uh, no, very, very uh, respected and favorite supplier for uh, shock absorber technologies. Uh, so, uh, last time I could not be there uh, because uh, the online sessions uh, were not possible. And uh, this time, I'm very happy that uh, the team uh, from VA Grade and the entire conference uh, uh, members could allow me to present this online. Uh, last time, uh, Guido would have presented how we leveraged the drive simulator to reduce the lead time, the number of iterations uh, that is usually needed, and uh, how we could develop a state of the art monocoque vehicle in the name of XCV700. And the vehicle uh, is now known for its uh, best in class vehicle dynamics. Uh, of course, that's an ICE car, but it's a very, very high-end monocoque vehicle and uh, it has been received very well in the market in India. This time, what we have done is we have pushed the envelope further. Uh, if you can go to the next slide, uh, uh, slide number three. Uh, so what we are trying to do is trying to develop a world-class born electric platform uh, that will have a, a lot of uh, you know, modularity and uh, it will, it will cater to the Indian market uh, requirements and also and also capable of going global as well. Uh, so that was the vision that we unveiled last August in UK. Uh, that's Mahindra's first born electric platform, uh, which we named as Inglo. That means made in India for the globe. Uh, and in this platform, we wanted to integrate this continuously variable semi-active suspension uh, system with an external wall. That's why it gets the name of CVSAE. Uh, in, in collaboration with uh, Deneco, which is, of course, Monroe is the brand name for the technology itself. And of course, Idiada has been our uh, uh, consultant, has been our guide and, uh, and uh, partner in integrating all these things to make sure that uh, we have uh, a very good vehicle dynamics at the end of the day. Uh, going further, uh, let me just quickly uh, introduce you to the, uh, the Inglo platform itself. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so here we are trying to develop uh, a platform that is common and modular. And right now we are envisaging uh, five different top pads and it could be many more in the future as well. And it's quite capable, quite powerful with uh, more than 250 kilowatt, uh, kilowatt dual motors. 
uh, the main power train is in the rear, as you know, for any more electric platform, and then uh, an additional motor in the front uh, for the four-wheel drive variants. And uh, here we are going for best-in-class TCD as well, 10.2 meters, and uh, the platform is capable of up to 78 uh, kilowatt hour LFP battery uh, for the safety and low cost and availability reasons. And the other aspect of this platform is uh, it is capable of uh, up to seven-seater configuration. Uh, the main challenges are that we have to make the platform common. Uh, we should not compromise anything uh, uh, in terms of each and every top part to, to deliver the uh, unique and uh, you know differentiated performance from a customer point of view. But at the same time, we should uh, uh, make everything uh, as much as possible common so that we have the economy of scale, we have reduction in the lead time for development, and, and, and we get the synergy between all these components put together so that we come to, uh, come to the market with different top heads in a relatively short time. Uh, if you go to the next slide, so we had, uh, I would say, uh, different challenges because Mahindra in India is the uh, number one ACV maker by revenue market share in terms of uh, uh, you know, the number of ACVs sold multiplied by the uh, you know, the cost of the ACVs because we are playing at a higher premium ACV space. Uh, so we already have a seven-seater uh, which is in the market in ICE, uh, but we are also planning an equivalent uh, seven-seater in the, the bond electric uh, version as well. So what the seven-seater does is, of course, it adds a lot of mass, but it adds the mass at the wrong place. Basically, it adds uh, at the rear axle, so it pulls the CG behind. And that becomes a uh, you know, very, very, uh, very notorious thing to handle in terms of vehicle dynamics, especially for the yaw control, yaw stability, and all those things. So this is one biggest issue, the, the mass. And of course, since we are an SUV player, we want to have a very commanding seating position. We would like to have a very high ground clearance. We should have a very good battery clearance over the speed breakers, uh, a very good approach angle, ramp over angle, and departure angle. Everything put together should live to the brand image of Mahindra, which means obviously we are pushing the center of gravity up. Uh, so this is one of the major challenges. Uh, and also when you add a battery of more than 500 kilograms, and especially with the LFP battery, which is having lesser energy density, uh, I would say the mass of the car goes up by 25%. So we have this combination of higher mass, uh, the CG which is smooth the rearwards uh, with respect to eyes, and also with respect to any benchmark, the CG is higher uh, because of the Mahindra DNA requirements of off-road. Uh, and the other challenge what we had was uh, we need to cater to different vehicles with the different characteristics. For example, the, the E8, or the vehicle that you see, you see in the, the left top corner, uh, that is a seven-seater more oriented towards the right comfort. Whereas the vehicle you see on the right and uh, the top corner, that is uh, a sporty coupe car which we need to tune with a very, um, uh, very good, uh, uh, you know, handling performance and a very stiff uh, damper setup, but also with an acceptable ride performance. So you have a, uh, you know, a huge uh, spectrum that needs to be covered. Uh, and protecting the Mahindra DNA, you need to also make sure that the vehicle is quite capable in terms of it, its limit handling characteristics and also steering response as well. The other thing which is unique to India is the Indian road profile. Most of you may be knowing we have a very, very good road to very, very bad roads. The speed breakers are not uh, having any standards. Uh, it's uh, smaller, bigger, taller, uh, every kind of speed breakers you will get. And you need to make sure that uh, uh, the suspension is doing its job in most of the road profiles. And the customer is uh, you know, not feeling uh, all the road inputs into the cabin. Uh, and the other thing is with a lot of global OEMs coming into the market, uh, and also, we ourselves set a very high limit, uh, a very high bar in terms of uh, the right comfort in our previous launches. Definitely, the market is expecting a further improvement in ride and handling uh, when we come with the bond electric vehicles. So, all of them put together uh, really put a lot of pressure in the overall suspension development, uh, which we tackled in two phases. The first one is the, the fundamental suspension itself, the foundation of everything. Uh, if you can go to the next slide. Um, so where uh, we are talking about a typical five-link rear suspension, uh, of course, because of the increased rear axle mass, the springs will be stiffer, the damper will be stiffer, uh, and uh, the tires, uh, we have gone for very high cornering stiffness tires, the low rolling resistance, um, and all those challenges, you know, we had to make sure that uh, we are able to overcome. Uh, 
Uh, in the front, uh, you have a very typical McPherson strut type suspension. Uh, we did a lot of investigation with the steering in the rear of the powertrain, front of the powertrain, uh, and also the lower control arm, single lower control arm, and the decoupled power control arm. And with the help of Idiada, we could finalize a very nice uh, KNC performance by choosing the right hot points, right specifications of all these suspension hardware. But one thing was very clear. Uh, when we integrated all these things into the drive simulator and drove ICE vehicle and uh, BEV vehicle back to back, there was always a, a deterioration in the handling performance and steering performance, which could never be overcome whatever we do. We tried to increase the damper forces, then it was leading to a uh, problem in the, the ride comfort, uh, especially the secondary ride. Uh, then uh, the, the complete, the BEV, the battery electric vehicle character was uh, completely different. When you give a steering input, the vehicle was not responding immediately. But when it was responding, it was responding with a huge yaw gain. So you had stability problems. Uh, high speed uh, handling was always a, a very, very big challenge. We introduced a variable gear ratio steering gear and mitigated to some extent. We tried to increase the cornering stiffness and uh, you know, some more gap we could bridge. But whatever we could do, uh, we could never meet uh, the uh, very agile and uh, swift handling performance of the ice because of the increased mass and increased uh, the rear axle weight. So finally, uh, you know, it pushed us to explore uh, new technology, expand the horizon, and that is how the semi-active suspension came into picture. Uh, if you can go to the next slide. Uh, so here, uh, of course, Tenaco came to our rescue. Uh, they have developed uh, and mass productionized this technology with multiple uh, uh, customers around the world. It's a very uh, standard system in all the premium cars uh, as on today. It has four displacement sensors in all the, uh, low, uh, the lower control arms, and it has an inertial measurement unit that is always uh, keeping a watch on the body, body movements. And taking all these inputs, plus the additional inputs available from brakes and steering and all those uh, standard inputs, wheel speed, uh, it, it gives all the input to the processor. The processor is owned by Mahindra. And we'll be controlling these uh, semi-active dampers, which are quite capable. The response time is in the range of 8 to 10 uh, milliseconds. Uh, and uh, these are controlled with an uh, external valve where we have an intermediate tube for separate uh, oil channel. So this technology as such was very exciting. Uh, but the challenge was, how do I validate this technology so that I'm very confident that I'm choosing the right architecture? And at the same time, I minimize my development time. So here the magic happened where uh, Tenaco and Idiada and Mahindra, we combined together and came up with this idea of how to integrate this uh, continuously variable semi-active damper technology in the drive simulator so that we can get a feel of uh, what, what it does in the real car um, uh, much ahead of the development process. And then we used it to shortlist the, uh, let's say the wall codes, uh, the solenoid wall uh, architecture, and then uh, make sure that we start, uh, we have a jump start in our development process and make sure we, we, we take the right decisions. If we go to the next slide, uh, you can see uh, two images, of course. The first image was last year uh, when we started the BEV program. And uh, you can see Guido smiling because he got the award in the last year's same conference. Uh, so he was sharing with us. But uh, during that event, we also drove the ICE and EV. Uh, and uh, we we were not very happy because the, the EV was heavy, it was uh, not controllable. Uh, so then uh, uh, the same set of people, uh, you can see uh, this April 2023, uh, where we could successfully integrate this uh, semi-active uh, model into the drive simulator. And we could validate that uh, the performance is now at par or even better than the ICE. And uh, uh, thanks to Tenaco team and the entire Idiara team that uh, by doing this, we could make sure that uh, the performance is not compromised and we are taking the right decisions and we reduce the lead time. Now, how this magic was done and how Tenaco and Idiara integrated and uh, made this happen in the drive simulator now will be taken forward. So in principle, I've explained the easy part of the presentation. Now the most difficult part will be explained to my, uh, my friends from Tenaco and Idiara. So over to you. Okay, so hello everybody. Now I'm going to talk about the dampers model that we have developed and how we have integrated that in the, in the simulator to do the fine tuning of the, of the suspension system. So, yeah. 
Uh, regarding the dumping technology that we have selected for this project is what we call CBCE, that it's already implemented in more than 75 vehicle models because it's one of the most sophisticated dumping technologies that we have developed at Teneco. So here, the core of the system is a high-efficient electrohydraulic external valve that allows to control the system and adapt the system even in a matter of milliseconds in order to uh, provide an agile, secure, and comfortable ride. But in order to be able to meet these handling and comfort requirements for each specific case, we need to resort to what we call physical rideworks uh, that are sessions where we do the fine tuning of the passive and active bailing of, of the damper in order to obtain that final performance that we are looking for. So in the traditional approach, these physical rideworks are, uh, is based in three main phases. So the first one is the selection of dust settings that we want to uh, assess. Then the preparation of the vehicle with that dampers that have that specific setting that we have selected. And then go ahead with the, with the assessment. This is the subjective evaluation and the different maneuvers and the different conditions. So the duration of this physical rideworks, of course, depends on, on each case, but if we focus on the iterative process, this is since the moment that we select a setting until the moment that we can drive and do the assessment, it takes around two hours from where half of the time is dedicated to the preparation of the vehicle. This is build the damper, test the damper, uh, and assemble it to the car. So where is the approach with the virtual ride works? This is the integration of the driving simulator in the process. So at the end, the objective is the same, but the process is slightly different. So here, we need to introduce uh, a new phase at the beginning, that is the integration of the vehicle model and the suspension model uh, in the driving simulator in order to uh, start with, uh, with the iterative process. But once we deal with this integration, this is something that we have to deal with once, because then uh, the selection of the settings that we want to assess is in a matter of minutes. So what we can obtain here is a reduction in a 46% of the time of these virtual roadworks. But in order to be able to do the transition from the physical roadworks to the virtual roadworks, it's essential to work with robust and accurate uh, models, vehicle models, but also component models. And in the sense of the CBSAE, this model is composed by the controller model and the damper model itself. So if we start with the controller model, um, yeah, it's fed, it's, it's completely developed in MATLAB and Simulink, and it's fed with the six accelerations in the center of gravity of the vehicle, and also the displacement and velocity signals coming from each one of the dampers that we have in each corner. So, of course, in the physical approach, uh, these signals come from the sensors that we have located in the car, but in the driving simulator, we can obtain that signals from the vehicle model. So with this, um, just to give you an overview of, of the controller, it's based on two controllers. The main one, that is the body control, in order to yeah, uh, control the mode in motion in, in terms of shift, pitch, and roll. And a secondary control, an adaptive control, that deals with some causal events as braking, uh, accelerations, and some other steering inputs or, or any other event of, of this nature. So from here, we calculate which are the currents that it's uh, damper has to have as an input in order to exert a certain force in order to control the car according to these uh, common signals. And we use these currents as inputs to the damper model. So here we propose two alternatives. The first one, a simple model that is based on the force velocity curves of the damper that we can translate to a lookup table to be integrated uh, in, in as in this function in the driving simulator, so that we can, can, we can obtain the force that each damper is exerting at, at its time according to the velocity and the current that we have calculated from the controller. It's true that this model is very fast and robust, but because of the nature of the, of the model itself, uh, we cannot consider some aspects of, for example, the dynamic response of the damper or some factors as hysteresis. So that's, where, that's why we propose another uh, damper model that is based in a co-simulation between Amisim and, and Simulink, that apart from uh, the base being also characterized as lookup tables, we can hydraulically define uh, 
the damper in order to uh, cover these limitations that we have with the first module. So under this scenario, uh, our working environment in order to go ahead with these virtual roadworks uh, changed from the physical truck and the physical car to the uh, driving simulator environment. So here, uh, within the driving simulator, on the one hand, we have different trucks where we can evaluate our damper system. And on the other hand, we have uh, the complete vehicle model, the real-time vehicle model, where we have integrated our damper system, the controller and the damper model, in order to go ahead with these iterations in order to do a fine-tuning of the, of the suspension system. So according to this, now we will go ahead with the results of the project. Okay. So finally, just a very short slides for me in which I will explain the right work workflow. We had two sessions in the simulator. The first session was dedicated to the definition of the hardware of the damper. We wanted to select on the one hand the passive and also the active uh, valving system. So for this, we have adopted uh, a strategy of integrating the damper models and to drive them with fixed values of currents, basically to define the working range of the, of the damper itself. Uh, in terms of maximum damping and lowest uh, damping uh, we could achieve. The second loop, we integrated also the controller model and this second loop was uh, to validate the decision of the hardware on the one hand, but also to do a pre-tuning of some of the functions and of the uh, uh, control modules that we have available from the controller. And uh, the main the main results are on the one hand in terms of the performance. So on the driving simulator, we were able to assess, as Vikram I introduced already, the improvement of performance that we can achieve in the vehicle, introducing the semi active damper technology, moving away from this, uh, the passive uh, damper. So in this, say, in this sense, we proved on the simulator and got the confidence that, that we were moving in the right direction in terms, of, in terms of hardware, and that we could achieve a better overall compromise between ride and handling. And then there is another set of results which are more based on the process. So we have compared the numbers uh, between the physical and the driving simulator based approach. And we can see that whereas typically we would need uh, more than three weeks, working weeks, uh, on the proving ground to do the evaluation of this sort of uh, dumpers at this stage, we only needed to have six days on the DIM. In these six days, we were able to evaluate more than 35 different setups corresponding to different hardware and, and software configurations. And all this was achieved uh, by having uh, basically uh, zero damper, uh, physical dampers built and sent to the proving ground, and also zero uh, vehicles. At the time, uh, we didn't have any mule vehicle available, and we still don't have. So we have done all this work purely virtually, really in the spirit of the zero prototype summit, I would say. So the conclusion is that the hardware was selected uh, in the early stages uh, based only on the driving simulator evaluation, and this implied a substantial reduction of the cost that building all these components and spending all this time in the proving ground would have implied. And for the next steps, now we are in the phase of uh, building the prototypes, and uh, sh uh, in a short amount of time, we'll also verify our ha hardware selection in the, in the real vehicles and uh, validate these models for the next uh, virtual loop. Okay, so this brings me to the end. And uh, I think we may have still some time maybe for some questions, so we'll be glad to, to receive them if, they, if you want. Thank you. Thank you.